what you see here are two relatively rare items from Newcomb. And they are not record players, despite looking like a record player. <laughs> they are definitely from the 70s and have 70s colors. You have the lovely wood grain vinyl wrap with, uh, I guess it's more of a mustard yellow and a terracotta orange. The one on the right was a gift from Emerson Collie back in 2017. It's in mint condition, but it didn't work. We'll get into that later. The one on the left, I got off eBay because it's the pretty much like a companion unit to it, and you'll see why. The one on the left is the model EDC 100. The one on the right is the ABC 500. They're not very common because they are absolute tanks. They are way overbuilt and I love it. But because they're way overbuilt, it was probably very expensive, but it's not a bad thing. These things are heavy duty industrial machines. The terracotta orange one is older. It's from 1973. This one, is from 1977. The 1973 one, every single electrolytic will be bad. And whatever supplier they used, I, just none of them checked out. When I got, when Emerson gave this to me, it had no volume and what little audio came out of it was completely distorted. Every single capacitor failed. Whether high ESR, internal leakage, uh, it just, everyone was bad. However, the 1977 one, all the original caps tested just fine. So let's take a look at these tanks. The terracotta orange one does not have a built-in speaker, but relies on an external speaker. And so it means you must plug it in through the headphones slash speaker jack to make it work. But you come over to this one, of course the speaker is self-contained, but yet you can still plug into it if you so desire. Although these two are almost identical otherwise. Small minor feature changes include the speaker switch off, monitor on. Over here, same functionality, but you also have a monitor switch. Both have automatic level control or automatic record level control. Both have the same meter. This is a very thick plate of steel, this thing is. And once you tear into it, you really get to see how much of a tank this is. But first, here's the back of the speaker right here. So this has a 10 inch speaker with an El Nico magnet. If you want, now this little button here, this folds up, contains the cord for the speaker, as well as the original microphone in its original packaging. And it does come with a rather lengthy cable. I uh, just actually have a little Velcro tie on here because it is so long and this is really all I need. So you have your quarter inch jack, it plugs into there like so. Now this guy over here, kind of similar, the packaging. Though if you look at this, uh, example, this label here is very similar to what you may have seen on their Newcomb record players. Come over here, it has the exact same text except it's printed on here. But yeah, otherwise these are both in fantastic minty-like conditions. Open this one up. It does have some of the original paperwork, which we can get into, and also the original microphone. I'll pull that out in just a moment. So here's the microphone in the box on this one, the ABC 500. Both microphones are the same. See, Newcomb even has their name on it. And power, and just another quarter inch jack. Though this one here, has a little microphone stand. And unfortunately, the uh, original plastic cable tie was broken, but I kept it anyways. But otherwise complete. There's also this little piece. 
guess it, uh, you put it around the microphone and it has a little wrist strap to it. So yeah, those are the microphones. Now, the Terracard Orange one did not come with any manuals, but for some reason, this one came with two instruction manuals. They're both the same. But also interesting, just reading through this, I mean, it tells you all the detailed functions of everything. It says external speaker, library models only. For permanent speaker installation, connect to jack on bottom of the unit. When the speaker headphones jack on the panel is used, the permanent speaker will automatically be disconnected. On this one here, I mean, the power cord comes in the bottom, but I don't see what jack they're talking about, and there is nothing on this little plate here, unless it's some modification done by Newcomb for particular models. Yeah, this one here, power cord storage is right here. So here's the uh, manual here. Pause and read if you'd like. But this is back when automatic level control, automatic record level switch actually meant something. This ain't no GPX. This is the real deal. And that's why they also had meters and peak indicators. And of course, both can act as a public address unit. Now, before we get into demonstration of these units, uh, we can take a look at what I had to do to them. These videos coming up where I was working on them were actually from two years ago, February and March, you know, 2022. Only now am I finally getting around to doing the video demonstration on these. I did not do a video on the recapping and everything on this unit here. However, when this guy came along, I did one thing for both of them. And that was getting the tape speed correct. And if you're wondering, what do I mean by that? Well, as these are absolute tanks, the motors in them are pretty much the same type of motor, motors you'd find in reel-to-reel -reel tape recorders, AC motors. By putting a new belt in it, the speed would have been off. On VOS Life's electrophonic 8-track uh, player with the adjustable head height. And you're going to wonder, well, do I have to change the pulley? No. And I can easily explain that before we get into this restoration. You see... On flat belts, you're locked in at the speed. You can't change the speed of it unless you increase or decrease the pulley size. But on a square belt, which is what these two are, and in the case of V-West Life's Electrophonic, you can. Because I'll show this as an example. With a square belt on the pulley on there, the one that's gonna have the most impact is the one on the motor because it's the smallest in size. It's like a V-belt in a car, pretty much, and the belt fully rides on both sides of the pulley. The speed is determined by how high the belt rides on that pulley. It makes full contact on both sides all the way down to the center, okay? And if you're going to say that can't be possible, well, here's how it works. Take a look at this little diagram I saw on Wikipedia on how CVT transmissions work in a car. They vary the size of the pulley to give you different ratios, okay? We're gonna say, well, we're not changing that. But by changing the belt size, you're accomplishing exactly the same thing. By putting a larger belt on, it'll run faster. Putting a smaller belt on will run slower. And going from like a thinnest belt I tried was a one millimeter up to a two millimeter and everything in between, I think. Uh, I had about a hundred hertz difference. Now, if you have to go so small, like a 0.8 or 0.7 millimeter belt, there's a problem there. And not only is there a problem, but you see also you can't really go that small because then you lose a lot of torque the belt can handle. I'm talking the happy median in the middle to make this happen. 
and by experimenting, I think I was going from one millimeter to 1.2 millimeter to the next size up I got. I buy all my belts from turntableneedles.com. I purchased the same exact diameter belt, but multiple thicknesses and experimented with it till I got the speed within less than 1%. You're not gonna get it dead on, but you might get lucky and get it dead on, but you're gonna get it close enough. As long as it's less than 1%, you won't notice it. Again, describing how it works, the belt is not slipping. The motor is not being labored down either. Nothing changes right there. It is such a small adjustment. It doesn't affect the motor at all. But this is how you adjust speeds on a fixed speed AC synchronous motor or a DC mechanically governed motor. That's how you can get everything dead on. But everything else with DC uh, electrically governed motors, then you don't have to worry about. Just find the equivalent belt, throw it in, and adjust the potentiometer, and off you go if you're correct speed. So, after that long, lengthy, windy description of, of belts and blah, 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 let's take a look at what I did about two years ago to these units. And here is this unit uh, taken apart. So again, caps look like they're fine because everything functions. You'd know if they were bad because this did not function at all. Uh, volume all the way up. You could barely hear it and it's completely distorted on the terracotta orange one. This one works fine. It appears the date on it is from 1977, so it might be a few years newer. That's where I go to now. And these are the belts it takes after measuring it and we're gonna put it in now the belts those stupid china pride um, belt packs you, you see people seem to get everywhere about the only thing they're good for is non-speed critical things like loading motors and stuff uh, I don't know about longevity I mean it could we'll find out because I have a pack of that just to see but it could either see how long it lasts. It, I mean, the facts are it can either break, stretch, or turn to goo. And we'll see with that. But for speed critical things like this, they're absolute garbage. So the thickness varies and it causes the wild flutter to shoot through the roof. Now that said, you know, ones that turn table in the US, yeah, you pay $5 or so per belt, but you're getting a quality belt that appears to be the belt. The thickness is the same. You don't see it moving in and out, in and out, like while it's going around the pulley, because the thickness varies. And so steady speed, and they, they are brand new, and they're of good quality. So it is important. Uh, and for units like this, um, belt size is critical for the accurate speed, because this is an AC synchronous motor. There's no speed control. Uh, the best you could do is change the belt. Uh, for example, if you want it to run slower, you put an even thinner belt on there. If you want need to speed it up, you put a thicker belt on here. And interestingly, this does not have auto stop, but there is, I think that would be a reed switch right there on that pulley there, uh, where it turns and uh or a hall effect switch and what it does instead during record only if you put it into pause or the tape ends the record lamp will flash and it senses it as you can see from the left supply reel which also drives the tape counter you don't have to remove this plate to do it there's a very very slight gap in there and you're able to slide it and at least on this one now after this I am going to do the terracotta orange one because at the time I didn't have a belt that size it still has the original but it's very loose I would prefer to change it and here's a new belt installed and I'm going to put a drop of grease underneath there now that the belt's on now that said, the belt is on, it fits perfectly. 
one thing you need to make sure is the belt is absolutely not twisted, absolutely square all the way around. Just give it, judge, you know, look at it. And as you can see, it doesn't get twisted. It's like perfectly square all the way around. What that'll do, if, it, if it's not, you'll get induce wow and flutter there. Now part two changing is see how I'm operating it by moving the flywheel right here. Yeah, the old belt was so loose that it would completely slip on this pulley. Now look, I'm, I have complete control over it. Even though, like I said, this is the larger one, this is smaller, so this is gonna generate more torque. But, so now that that's in, I'm gonna lubricate a few things. I'm gonna put a, draw, or a little bit of grease under here. I already did the bearing on here, but I can slip in the spout for the zoom spout on this, put a drop on the top bearing, or really the rear bearing on this. And good to go. This was held in by two screws. I'm gonna put that back down. But you can see how overbuilt this thing is. It's an absolute beast. And this is probably like one of the only cassette recorders I've seen that use an AC motor. There's probably others out there, but I'm just saying, it's just amusing that like a reel-to-reel -reel, uses an AC synchronous motor with a cooling fan to drive the tape transport. But it's pretty stable. I tested it, and uh, we'll go from there. Next, we're gonna have to address some slight mechanical things. Um, just mainly adjustments or something may have been bent, I don't know. For example, you go in the fast forward, right? That shouldn't happen. Now, what happens is at, right in the middle of your screen, that lever there, when you hit stop, it should move slightly, but not enough to trip the tape deck. Well, I'm gonna very carefully bend this little tab forward, just a smidgen, so it doesn't pop up when you hit fast forward, or go to stop from fast forward. And guarantee you've got the um, service manual, it'll probably say to do just that. And success, check it. That's all it was when you hit stop at slight movement from it, you know, because it's on a, almost the same linkage, you know. See, watch this. It's in fast forward. It moves a little bit, but if you if it's not and it goes in the eject mode, it moves a lot. And now, fast forward, nothing. Rewind, nothing. So that's fixed. Excellent. Easy fixes. I like that. Now, this next thing we're going to adjust is for this cassette loading mechanism. It's again, this is way overbuilt, but it's very cool nonetheless. Like when you put a tape in, this is going to slide forward until it clicks, and when it goes down, it should not spit the tape out. Well, you see that little tab runs out the back there, right where my finger is, uh, and it locks into place with that little notch. When I pull the tape down, it should not let go. So it probably needs bent upward, I wanna say. And success once again, that's exactly what it is. I had to bend this piece upward slightly. And there's an adjustment. This stuck a screwdriver right here and I carefully bent it up, not much, but it did make a big difference. And you see, when you push down on it, when it's going into the machine, see it doesn't kick back like it used to. Now when it goes in, it will, kick back so when you eject it pushes it out it releases basically so watch this I put a tape in it locked now watch when I go in see by the time it releases it's engaged so tape doesn't shoot back out at you then when you hit eject so you can easily grab the tape so yeah over engineered over complicated but it's a beautiful thing click down fast forward See, it doesn't kick out of fast, or see when I first got it, and as you just saw, it fast forward, hit stop, it just shoots the tape right back in the eject. You don't want that. Get on the play, and then pops the tape out. So those are actually pretty easy fixes. Just a minor adjustment of things. Now what I'm gonna do, uh, I'm gonna put a drop of oil on the capstan bearing. And that's, and I'll probably put a drop of oil on the pinch roller bearing. 
The other ones are plastic and they're doing just fine. I'm gonna take in, also it's a little glazed over looking. Cleaning it won't fix that. I'm gonna take some 400 grit sandpaper and run it on there until the pinch roller looks new. Don't do it a lot and do it evenly and clean it. All right, and here I am I'm trying to do the pinch roller. But as you see, there's no evidence of glazing on it now. It looks like it's a brand new pinch roller. However, you gotta clean it afterwards as there'll be a lot of rubber dust on it. But yeah, basically you're just revealing a new layer. So there it is after cleaning it with some alcohol. Now it's like brand new. Being that the capstan, the, fan, the motor's always running, that capstan's still spinning. I made it real easy to clean. Now I was in record, I just fixed it, but whenever you hit stop, it kicked the eject door back open again, so I had to bend that tab just a little further. Now, now that's working right finally. But our record lamp is burned out, so I'm gonna have to address that issue. All right, polish that up. It's like a mirror right now. I'm gonna demagnetize the record playback head. Novus a lot and it works well on metals too for shining them up and protecting them and restoring the stuff but watch this now that I did that it really shoots the tape out now because it's so slick okay I found the problem this is what it's supposed to do when the tape's not moving I don't think the record uh, play switch was in the right position. The lever for it might have been over top that little paddle there, hence never engaging record. But yeah, both lamps are good. And that's what's supposed to do until that reel starts turning. That'll be a solid red. Solid light, I should say. And there you can see what it'll do. Let me switch it off. You'll see the time delay when it starts as the capacitors charge or the capacitor charges up before it starts doing that. Watch. Well, that's because I just had it on, but before it did take a little longer. But yeah, let me see if I can rotate this if it'll stop. Yep, check it out. It's solid now. Any release? Looks like Gladys worked on this. And on this transformer, I want to say this bottom part would be the date ninth week of 1977 and the reason why it's important I couldn't read the last digit on the date code in the cabinet which I'll show in a second all right getting ready to reassemble in the cabinet and there's the schematic now this is where the power cord goes for storage on the other side but this side here this foil here is actually grounded and they I had to I have to read it as this fell off so I'm putting double sided tape on it you can see where it was uh, the circuit board's right going to be right below that so that's why that's there just an insulator and there you go big 6x9 speaker and to take it out of the cabinet there are two screws on each side, so four in total. And at first it may stick a little bit. It's a cabinet, I had to take a plastic, um, I took a plastic uh, pry tool so I didn't damage anything. I had to pry it up before it broke loose. But this is the last screw. There, that's in. Now next step, I'm gonna put Novus on this. And this is supposed to come off so you can easily clean the heads. Like so. And I already did the outer cabinet. Too bad they quit making this. Um, it, think of it, the thing is like armor all is very greasy and excessively shiny. This isn't and it protects it and doesn't leave a greasy feel once it dries. 
I let it run for a bit to break in, and even though I used the same exact belt thickness, yeah, this is my three kilohertz tone. We're off by 100 hertz. So I'm off to order 1.2 millimeter belt and try that and see if it gets it on speed. A week later, I got new belts from Turntable Needles. Same size, but these are, this one here is a 1.2 millimeter thickness. The original one was, oops, a little grease on, I gotta wipe it off, but this one was a uh, one millimeter thickness. And that's what was in here originally. So adding a thicker belt, let's see if we get the speed closer. If not, I have a 1.3 millimeter belt to try. Oh, it's faster by about uh, 30 hertz. Let me stop talking. Okay, the third belt, the 1.3 millimeter belt, um, is installed and cleaned and perfectly square on there. And this one appears to be matching the speed very closely. So belt number three did the trick. I can't talk, it'll screw up. I know this isn't a good way of doing it, but it's doing it as a quick test. All right, so from that, I have a 1.3 millimeter belt on there to make the speed correct. Um, roughly the same size, instead of a 9.2, it's a 9.1, but you get the idea. Larger, thicker belts increase the speed. So this is a thicker belt than, than what was on there originally. Now, I am gonna touch the terracotta orange version with a separate speaker next. It has the original belt, it's loose. However, it actually is a little too fast. So putting a smaller belt on may fix that. I don't know, we'll see very shortly. All right, I got the terracotta orange one, the ABC 500 out. And I'll do that proper, it's on its side. Checking tape speed, it is a bit fast. Turn it down to right there. This is just a quick test, not an actual. Yeah, it's going a bit too fast. This is the original belt in it. Well, this is the one millimeter belt. It's going too slow now. So now let's try the 1.2 millimeter belt. A little bit slower, but I mean, that's a very small percentage there. So it probably won't be noticeable. Plus it'll probably improve once the belt breaks in. But if I were to put a 1.3 millimeter belt on, it's probably gonna end up being way too fast. It seems like when you put the larger belts on, see, the tape speed seems to jump significantly. So the speed's off by half a percent, but it, again, it may improve as the belts break in. We'll see, but yeah, if I jump up to the next larger belt size, it's gonna be too fast. It's just a little sacrifice here. I mean, you know, that was the opposite. The original belt that was in there was actually dead spot on, but way too loose. It was like it was about to fall off the pulleys. So there's no way I could have used it. And then, so I measure the thickness. I put a one millimeter in, that's what it had, and it was way, way too slow. 1.2 was still too slow. And um, a 1.3 millimeter, just slightly above three kilohertz. And here's the date on this one, September 4th, 1973. And I pulled it out of here, it smelled thoroughly vintage. And it was good. And here you can see all the new electrolytics I installed. Yeah, this one, every single one was bad. And symptoms included no volume, lots of distortion, and other oddities. And yep, every single one tested bad. Now this was from 73, this is a 1977, and they obviously changed suppliers on the caps, even though it's almost the same identical unit otherwise. 
Okay, so now that we're back, I will show powering up and go from there. Power switch. Now when you turn it on, you'll get a slight hum from the unit. That's caused the motor in this runs at all times when the power switch is on. The motor has a cooling fan on. This is very, this is built like a reel-to-reel -reel tape recorder, but it's a, just a compact cassette unit. So we'll go ahead and turn this guy on. Okay, both are on. They both have a pilot light for power, as well as a pilot light for record. These keys are solid chunks of plastic. These older units, I mean, yes, they're plastic, but it's built very well. It is, again, way overbuilt. Look at this. Look at that kathunk. Non-soft eject. Okay. So, um, I'll go over this guy here. So, monitor, that's for recording. Monitoring out the speaker, low, medium, or high. Speaker, that's where we off the monitor. When it's in monitor mode, you go down to here. Or on. So, the speaker on. Power switch. Tape counter. I always love this type of material, or this type of texture on older decks, as well as that smoked plastic window here. A very nice touch. I already mentioned the automatic record level control. So record level or PA mode adjust. Tone control, treble or bass. Only thing is, this is an actual tone control. You notice on a lot of other things, the tone control is just the treble control and nothing else. This, if you turn towards treble, it reduces the bass. If you turn this towards bass, it reduces the treble. So it's a real tone control. Then you have your standard volume control right there. Everything on this one is the same, except like I mentioned, no monitor switch because the speaker's built in. All right, so I'll demonstrate recording function on this unit here. Load the tape. This also works when the unit is in pause mode. This will also flash. It's based on whether the take-up reel is turning or not. So now we're gonna set our record level. Now, let's try this. We'll do it manually, so let me... No, we're not. Okay, uh, <laughs> see, I forgot. It's in PA mode regardless, and I got the speaker right next to the microphone, so that ain't gonna work. So let's shut this off. Now, so yeah, don't ever do that. That scared the crap out of me. All right, now, <laughs> so we'll set this for mid-range. So this is manual level control, and it also works in PA mode depending on what position you have the switch in here. So let me put it in automatic record level. All right, now we're in automatic record level control, so let me turn this down to show you. Now, the automatic record level control on this is interesting how it works. It's not like other units you may have used. You see, I have the record level all the way down. You'd think by flipping this on, it would go back into automatic. You don't have to set that. Well, look at the meter, blah, blah, blah. Nothing's happening on there. Turn it up halfway again. Test, test, test. You see, now the meter's moving. Now, let's crank this all the way up. Okay, now watch. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. See, it, it's not going in the over zone because the automatic record level is turned on. It's just a limiter, basically. Now we'll turn it off. Now look at it peg. See what I mean? <laughs> so this one works a little different. I'll turn this back down. So, yep, you do have manual level control. And if you don't want the clip or it'll automatically back itself off, you turn that on. So let's try... I'll record with it on, turn it up some so we have full range. 
Make sure the speaker is off because we'll get some mad feedback because I got the speaker right there. Hit record and play at the same time. Wait for the leader to pass. Okay, uh, recording on the Nuco model AVC500. This is recording with automatic record level control on. And let's see how that turned out. Let's go ahead and rewind. And we'll see how it turned out on this thing. It sounds really good. Okay, uh, recording on the Nuco model AVC500. This is recording with automatic record level control on. And let's see how that turned out. And you know, I'm barely pushing it on here. I mean, that was loud. Uh, this is the deal where you'd unravel this and you'd put it in front of an audience, a classroom, whatever, and be able to use the PA mode to broadcast it. Everybody said, they hear you. This thing is loud, it does its purpose, but at the same time, it sounds great. I was, that's why I love these industrial tape recorders and Newcomb record players, which I have quite a few. I still have to restore them, but I, that's why I'm a fan of these. These things work very well and they're very overbuilt and it's beautiful. All right, so I'm gonna rewind the tape and we're gonna put it in this guy and do exactly the same thing. I'm gonna use the same microphone so I don't have to unpack the other. Okay, so again, this one Okay. Damn it. So yeah, being the type of unit it is, you gotta make sure this is turned off because we're so close to the unit, we'll get feedback. Turn that on, crank it up. And uh, let's go into record mode on this one. Okay, picking it up. Okay, now we are recording on the Newcomb model EDC 100. Totally self-contained speaker on this model, but otherwise the same unit. And it sounds just as good. This one has a six by nine speaker in it instead. But yet you could still plug in the external speaker. You should still plug, blah. You can still plug in an external speaker if you so desire. Let's find out how it turned out. Okay, so now we're gonna play back on here. Turn up, we have to turn the speaker on. Okay, now we are recording on the Newcomb model EDC 100. Totally self-contained speaker on this model, but otherwise the same unit. And it sounds just as good. This one has a six by nine speaker in it instead. But yet you could still plug in the external speaker. You should still plug. Blah. You can still plug in an external speaker if you so desire. Let's find out how that turned out. Perfect. Now, look. And while I'm sitting here, these units have been on for a little bit. The motors get must be getting warm in there warming up and it has that really strong vintage smell to it and it smells awesome in here right now <laughs> the only thing that would make it better is if it had vacuum tubes and had the vacuum tube smell on top of it so we just demonstrated recording with the uh, microphone but you know we have this speaker here why don't we have a little fun i'm going to run it all the way over to the opposite side of the kitchen here all right, see, I still have plenty of cord left, but it's way over there now. Uh, so let's try this. I'm gonna put the tape back in, but I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna try PA mode now that we're nowhere near the speaker itself. Yeah, um, testing. <laughs> Even way over there, I'm still somewhat uh, too close or I probably have the volume up too loud, but yeah, 
I can easily address a large audience here. <laughs> it's probably picking both my voice and the speaker up. It is sort of echoing because I do have it up pretty loud. It's very sensitive. So let's turn this off. Let me see this. So I can easily address a, a large crowd with this thing. I'm barely even pushing it. And this thing has a large, long enough. You know, let me, let me try this. Uh, I have a long enough cable. Let me, um, get up. And, uh, get over here. Now, we have no feedback. I'm out of, far enough away, sort of. But yeah, I'm able to talk pretty loud. This would work perfectly for public address, like it said, and you can record with it. How cool is that? So, now we're sitting here. Let me just play back what we just recorded on this guy through the speaker over there. Okay, now we are recording on the Newcomb model EDC 100. Totally self-contained speaker on this model, but otherwise the same unit. And it sounds just as good. This one has a six by nine speaker in it instead. But yet you could still plug in the external speaker. You should still plug, blah. <laughs> you can still plug in an external speaker if you so desire. Let's find out how that turned out. <laughs> Leave the mistakes in there. It makes it all the more fun. Now, one thing I'll discuss about this. You see, when I was in high school, I used to... Uh, when I had a study hall, I asked... I was in the AV... Uh, it wasn't an AV club. I was. It was more of delivering um, AV stuff like TVs and VCRs on the cart to the classrooms and uh, as well as maintaining the stuff. But in the meantime, I really wanted back there so I could play with this stuff. And I did. I don't think my high school had either of these, but we had some, we had one industrial tape recorder like these, but I don't remember what brand it was on her. I don't think it was Audiotronics. I don't think it was Calphone. It may have been my new comb, but not one of these two. I don't remember it. I don't remember it being this uh, mustard yellow color right here. It was self-contained. It had the speaker in it like this, but it was not this unit. It, it seems familiar though. It may have been another model by them. That's all I'm gonna say. I remember it being built uh, very well. So, but what I used to do, see when I was in high school, okay, I will just give you a rough example. I was in high school between 1996 and 2000. I graduated in 2000. However, unlike most kids my age, I was really into listening to stuff on the quote-unquote oldie stations. I loved 60s and 70s music. And I was actually making mixtapes at the time of said music. And I would play it on these units just to get that full effect. Because even just having an El Nico magnet speaker and how the it works does give it that sound to it. Even though it's not a full-out tube unit, it does change the audio enough to give it that unique sound plus these early these transistor units it just sounds so much different and just being able to use these absolute beasts was awesome so i have my cassettes and i guess i could get to show you some brief clips of some things i would have uh, played from my mixtapes i kept them all these years I guess one thing I could say is the local radio station, um, 3WS, uh, how things have changed on the radio. They used to laugh and joke and do all kinds of fun stuff on the radio. Now, they don't do any of that anymore. It's totally different now. So let me get a tape out. Let me find something good to play and we'll try it. Hopefully the copyright police doesn't attack. Okay, while I am looking for something to play, the Rewind and fast forward on this is driven by a rubber tire and it is very silent and smooth. Like you can't even hear the thing, but it's going. 
And when I start to demonstrate this, I'm probably gonna switch microphones so I can walk around a bit while we do this. Okay, this right here, I can explain. There was a um, 3M tape recorder, which Emerson Cully did manage to find me the exact model I was looking for and hooked me up with it. I have to restore it still, it's in storage. But I found this reel-to-reel -reel on the shelf in the AV room. And I played that reel on the 3M unit into a 1990-ish Caliphone tape recorder, which I also own too, and record it with that. So this is off a of reel-to-reel -reel into the unit here. That's why this tape's relevant to our discussion, the AV room, this, everything. say 2x on the tape counter and this kept looping for some reason this is exactly as I recorded off the reel all right what we'll do now I'll go ahead and put it in this unit just because this one hasn't got as much love right now, so let's do it. And it does this again. And I did not do this. This was off that reel to reel. So let's find something else on this tape. Again, AV room was cleaning out. I got these tape recorders that didn't belong to the, to the school. It was like some teachers that just left there. Emerson, mystery tapes. I taped it. Now it's like in my room. 
and it works. From the oh, 50s and I know what I'm talking about right there. I can insert a uh, clip. This is, I got this TV. Now this I wasn't supposed to get because you know how schools are. Instead of um, this discarding, it was going to be thrown in the trash. Okay. Well, instead of this being thrown in the trash, I asked if I could have it. And that was a kind of an ordeal. Cause it's like, well, you know, school player, taxpayers, blah, blah, blah. blah. So you're just going to throw it away. Well, that's to say I did end up getting this TV right here. Don't know what I'm talking about. Yeah, and another thing I forgot to mention, not only is it a VU meter, it's also a power meter when it's in uh, playback. Let's just show how much of the amplifier I'm using. I'm going to turn up loud. Now, if you're wondering why that sounds muffled, that's because I was recording it off a TV. I was playing back a tape. So yes, that is the Vogue's Five O'Clock World. I used that on the Drew Carey show. You may have heard it before. This was recorded, but that was actually recorded off 3WS when I did that, which I have on. Let's see, it's one of the, yeah, tape number two, recorded summer of 1998. But yeah, so that also acts as a power meter in addition to a VU meter. Hey, Kylie, what are you doing? Turn it up. Wow, I, I just barely got that past the L on normal and that thing was very loud. This has no problem dressing a large audience, I'll say that. Wonder. You can hear that bass that El Nico magnet speakers make. It sounds really good. That really warm sound to it. Only thing that make it better is if it was a two band. This is Peggy Finnegan from Channel 11 News, and I love all my oldies all the time on 3WS. So, last thing we'll try to do, let's uh, do some line level recording with this thing. We'll dub from one unit to the other. I don't have proper monorail uh, jacks for this, but it'll still work fine because it's going mono to mono. I mean, nothing's really going to get lost by doing this. So, this will work. Line level in. And uh, set the volume on this about mid range. And this, I can actually demonstrate how the uh, monitor function works. So you do not want to leave it on speaker mo on mode because I have, I'm going to do manual record level. And if I adjust the record level to where it needs to be, it's going to be very loud and um, extremely loud. That's what the monitor function's for. So uh, I'll demonstrate. Uh, so this is a normal bias tape, of course. That's the only thing it supports. Let's do this. Put it into record mode. Monitor. All right, so do a quick dub here. And grab the tape. Um, I've made too much pasta is the band. You can find them on Bandcamp. This is their first album, um, Swear I Saw Your Mouth Moved. And this is I've Had a Great Time in the Trash. I'll play it very briefly, but uh, for testing purposes, you can uh, sample it. Sounds really good and fitting for these units. So I'll just do that, let the leader pass. And see, it seems to work like good right there. Now I'm in monitor mode on low. If I kick up the medium, it's very loud.
So quick test there. I'll record it and back up and play it back. Perfect. Now go back and rewind on this unit. I'll put it back in um, regular, turn this down just in case, turn on regular speaker mode. Now I'll play it back. I'm gonna switch microphones real quick. So here we go. set decks were even such a thing this is how you would dub a tape pretty much even though this is monoral because it's a perfect opportunity it record quality is fantastic on these units now I have a silly idea you can do both at the same time so what do I mean by that? Well, I'm gonna hook the microphone in and try it. All right, now I'm recording. I turn the volume down on this because both auxiliary and microphone inputs are the same level, but I was able to turn on mic level control off. I'm recording my voice over top of this. I am not even gonna attempt to sing for the both, for both of us. The world's not big enough. For the both of us, for the both of us. That probably sounds like crap, but oh well, it's just a fun test, right? Let's play it back. Now one thing we gotta do, turn this down so we don't get feedback when I go in the speaker. Now it's hit play and uh, see what we came up with. All right, now I'm recording. I turn the volume down on this because both auxiliary and microphone inputs are the same level, but I did to turn on my level control off. I'm recording my voice over top of this. I am not even going to attempt to sing. For both, for both. Just a fun test, right? Let's play it back. So yeah, we can redo that too. So at this point, um, I really don't have much else to demo. We demonstrated all recording, how the monitor switch works, and what the different monitor levels are. And that's it. So really, yeah, that's it. Uh, that's every function on this unit. Nothing else to demo, just to say these are absolute tanks. They are fantastic, and um, I hope you enjoyed this video. So, on that note, thank you for watching. <laughs>